They say that best friendships can change your life forever. Well, this was the case with my almost 20 year working relationship with Jim. that definitely had a purpose that was far greater than either of us could ever have imagined. All those years ago, a footballer and a theatre director came together because maybe we were naive and idealistic enough to think that we could change the world. Right from when we first met, Jim saw a need to help inspire young people and nothing was gonna stand in his way. There have been many amazing people that have helped support Reach Youth today and I'm here to represent all the voices of those people. Right from the beginning of Reach, Jim always wanted to do things that many thought couldn't be done like inspiring 3,000 people, rowdy teenagers at the tennis centre to become heroes of their own lives. He had young people climb mountains, swim in the freezing ocean, jump off waterfalls, break arrows and even wooden boards and metaphorically know, so as they metaphorically knew that nothing in their lives was too difficult to overcome. He hiked groups of people into a cave that was at night and it was filled with candles. He wanted to return them back to the innocence and wonderment of childhood. Together, we had young people dance to the beat with broken rubbish bins and Jim was, was beating those drums like he was the master of the tribe. And he did that because he wanted every young person to feel the power of ensemble and the group. He was a driving force behind creating a makeshift Indian village where many industry leaders and a group of diverse young people got to experience that it takes a whole village to raise a child. He ran workshops in prison to show that young people and young inmates can transcend the walls of their own lives. Jim led a team of us who facilitated workshops in Daniloquin and other rural areas because a very brave funeral director was sick and tired of running memorial services for country teenagers who were silently committing suicide. He journeyed to remote parts of this country to give a voice to many indigenous young people. Jim must have spoken to well over 200,000 young people on his own in his tireless endeavor to run inspirational school workshops he also worked with hundreds of teen teachers because he believed wholeheartedly that education and positive role modeling could set a young person up for the rest of their life. Based on his experiences in football, he learned how to build a youth organization by bringing people together with varying skills and a common drive to make a difference. The army of reach leaders trained that are now out there spreading his universal messages to thousands of participants are a testament to his foresight in making sure reach would endure way beyond the life of its two founders. I can safely say that Jim was able to run reach workshops a lot longer than I was because he was far cooler than I was. And young people still loved him right up to the very end. I often pondered why such a great man who did so much for others would be so tragically inflicted with cancer. Jim was always perceived as a man of extreme physical strength, who was a protector for those less fortunate than himself. And many initially thought these qualities would allow him to successfully battle his disease. During his journey, to never stop trying every possible medical and alternative treatment from standard operations right through to Indonesian smoke therapy, I started to see his illness in a whole different light. As Jim's physical power got taken away, his real essence started to reveal itself more and more. Just like a monk shaves his head and lets go of physical attachments, in order to get closer to his spiritual self. The longer Jim struggled, the more he was stripped back to a place of pure love. He was a simple soul who 
who right through to the end couldn't help caring for young people, many of whom he still thought were worse off than him. I now believe that Jim in some ways was like a prophet and his destiny was to demonstrate how we should all be able to live our lives. He was far from perfect, but because he embraced those imperfections, his message became accessible to everyone. Jim was adamant that his battle with cancer was going to be public because he wanted to draw light on the fact that there are many people struggling with all types of illnesses and their lives are just as important and as noble as his was. I, like most who were part of this man's life, would like to thank him. Jim, your belief in me and many others has allowed me to become all that I am and all that I hope to be. My heart goes out to Sam, Matisse, Tiernan, and the whole of the beautiful Steins family for the loss of this incredible man. But as difficult as it is today for all of us, I know that we all take a piece of Jim's spirit into our lives and we'll hold on to it always. Farewell, but never goodbye, Jimmy. You are my business partner, my teacher, my guardian, and my best friend. We all wanted to be like Jim. You were a warrior poet who was ahead of his time and your legacy gives us all the greatest code to try and live our lives by. Thank you, mate.